Welcome to the Food Forest course. Each week we offer assignments and information to guide you step by step through the design of your own food forest. Here's some things to consider as you venture down the path of materials this week. I'd like to share with you my process for creating a guild in my food forest. First, I want to consider what the microclimate is of the area. This means that I'm assessing this space for what sort of light it receives, what time of day it receives that light, what the soil conditions are, what the drainage is like, and other factors that might influence what plants are able to grow in that space. Now, sometimes you're working with a blank slate, and so you might be thinking about how you want to change your soil to be able to accommodate your guild. And we're talking about that in another video of this series. So for this one, we're just going to focus on plant selection. How do we determine what plants we want in our guild? So you want to look at your microclimate map, and once you know the conditions that you're going for in that space, then you're looking for associates for plants. So here's just a quick guild that I pulled together from my nursery that offers diverse ecological functions and yields for my kitchen. It's around the theme of perennial vegetables. So here, this is the north side of the guild. So it's the side that's going to get the least amount of sun. I've got mugwort, Artemisia vulgaris, which is an aromatic plant for discouraging pests. It's also got an edible leaf. It's a medicinal plant, and it also attracts beneficial insects and can be used as mulch. We've got Elizabeth Campanula here, which has a beautiful edible flower and it likes to grow in shade and it's attractive to beneficial insects and butterflies. We've got the gooseberry here. So we've got a edible, green, tasty berry that'll grow in partial shade as the apple tree gets bigger. But for right now, it'll produce a lot while we're waiting for the apple tree to get bigger. Then we have lovage here, which is a plant that's a perennial vegetable and it produces a lot of biomass as well as being attractive for beneficial insects. It's an early spring vegetable, so I like the seasonality of this. Then we've got a Welsh onion here, which is aromatic. It's discouraging for pests. It's tasty and it produces green onions that I can eat all summer long. The flowers are also attractive for beneficial insects. And then lastly, on the south end of the guild, we have French sorrel here, which is an edible leaf that tastes like lemon. It also produces a lot of biomass. It can be used for a chop and drop. And it's a ground cover. It doesn't spread very quickly, but it can cover the ground and provide this nice edible leaf that I love to pair with lovage and will just grow so nicely in the partial shade of this apple tree as it gets bigger. So collectively here, we have diverse ecological functions in this small guild, as well as diverse yields that provide throughout the year that I can share with my household. Thanks for joining me for the Food Forest course this week. I hope that you gathered inspiration for calling in diversity, both in your plant choices and in the habitats that you're cultivating for other species.